Hello, Culture Reset team. Hello, fellow artists, fellow makers, fellow revolutionaries. Um, my name is Chinonya Madimba. I'm a playwright and I'm a poet. Ah, oh, I'm really pleased that I've been asked to give this provocation because it's made me think a lot about where I've been for the last few weeks, certainly in terms of theatre and the arts in general. I feel like I've been trying to be part of a conversation, a conversation that feels very difficult sometimes and a conversation that feels very necessary always. But in doing that, I realise that quite a lot of the hard work is in being in spaces where we're only ever talking about what's gone wrong, what's not working. So when I was asked to give this provocation, I started to think about what happens when we get it right. How do we ensure that we're talking about the challenges, but that we're also celebrating the things that we get right? That feels like such a weird question, even to me, as I'm saying it out loud. But I guess it's something that I would love to share with other people and for other people to start to think about. Because throughout my career, I've been lucky enough to be part of projects and commissions that I feel have got it right. Have I shouted enough about that? No, but I do acknowledge it. I try to acknowledge it publicly and I certainly acknowledge it to my peers. And what does it mean, getting it right? What does that actually mean? For me, it means feeling valued as an artist, I guess. And in 2018, when I was commissioned to write a community play, I feel like it's one of those examples where I was valued as an artist. I was asked to write the play off the back of a smaller community play I'd done for the theatre about a year and a half before. My relationship with the kiln had started when I was an extremely fresh playwright. They supported my career by inviting me to workshops and groups where I was able to develop my craft, but also learn from more established writers. During that time, I was never made to feel that I didn't belong in that building. The more I went in, the more it became apparent that this was a home for me. That is something we can get right and we do sometimes get right. However, if playwrights like myself never feel that we have those buildings, if black playwrights, black female playwrights, never feel that they can walk into buildings and call it home, then how do we change that? But let's go back to getting it right. So in getting this commission, I became aware that I was telling and writing a story that was ultimately going to come from a community in in Kilburn, where the theatre is based, that I had known as a young person, but I hadn't known for a few years. What became very apparent very quickly is that Indu and the rest of the team at Kiln were completely committed to not only the story, but also to me as a writer. From the first terrible draft to every decision made about the creative team, I was made a part of it. At no point was I made to feel that any decision was beyond my understanding. At no point was I made to feel that my artistic vision was in any way in contradiction or in opposition to anything that the building was also trying to achieve. And at no point was I made to feel that the failure or the success of the project 
was down to me alone. All of this feels obvious, but more often than not, those are things that are not happening in many other processes. The experience of the kiln was not the only one, but unfortunately, it's one of very few experiences that I can say from beginning to end, from across the organisation, I was made to feel like both a part of the team, but also in my very unique role as the writer, I was given the support. When I asked for a dramaturg, I was given a dramaturg. That dramaturg's relationship with the theatre was never exclusively to me. Whenever I had um, conversations with director on the project, those conversations were as much about the work and as about as as they were about what I had dreamt in terms of what the show could be. And the, the relationship with the director was absolutely at the heart of it, as was with all the creative team. There was never a meeting I wasn't invited to. There was never a sense that any decisions made about the play I had written didn't need my voice in them. We got it right. We got it right because we got nearly 100 people, non-professional community cast, backstage and on stage, to shine. We got it right because those people still feel a part of their theatre. They still go in, they still meet. We got it right because the theatre then created a programme of learning that was based on what they'd learnt about and from that community. We got it right because at no point in the process did I have so much as a moment of doubt about either my ability as a writer or the theatre's ability to support it. We got it right. And like I say, I guess my provocation is as well as putting into place the things that we need to change and to challenge what is currently happening in our industry. What do we need to put in place to ensure that we are also witnessing and celebrating the times we do get it right? What does that even mean to get it right? And what does that look like? And how can we learn from the people who are getting it right? Anyway, lots of questions. Um, I hope this provocation gives you guys something to think about. And I hope that in thinking about it, we realise that getting it right can mean more than one thing. And somehow it feels that at the centre of it, it's about actually adhering to the true meaning of collaboration. Hmm, lots to think about, but thank you for inviting me to be a part of this and good luck. <laughs>